Hey, what is up, YouTube? This is the Mermail Master coming at you from the Team Time Riders Yu Gi 2 channel with a breaking news video. Um, as you can see before you, the ban list was just released. Um, I currently don't have my filming equipment together, but I thought I really wanted to do a quick video to discuss my thoughts on the list. Um, personally, I really, really like this list. Um, I think it fixes a lot of the inherent problems in the game. They're trying out a couple of new things. And, um, you know, I feel I feel like they knew what to hit on this list. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's start going through it. Um, as you can see here, the list will remain in effect. Um, the old list will remain in effect until March 30th, wherein this new one will now take effect. So the first change on the list I noticed is Magispector Unicorn Kieran, which went from limited to forbidden. Now, even though uh, Kieran isn't really doing a lot in the game right now. Um, I think it's a very inherently broken card. It provides too much interaction, especially on your opponent's turn. And having pendulums, which can basically like refill the field with the fodder that Kieran can use to like bounce its stuff back, that it was the card that ultimately I think needed to go from the game. In Magic Specters, it was fine, but you know, once we started getting like metal foes and like other things that allow you to feel Kieran easily, um, the card was ultimately, it ultimately did have to go. So next we have the Tyrant Neptune. Now this is really good. Um, I really like this because of that two card OTK combo um, with, I think it was one of the lyrical Luskinians. You just instant fusion out, tribute it for Tyrant Neptune and, um, and just wreck your opponent. I think it was a very, very good hit. Um, you know, Konami said that they don't really like hitting things preemptively, but I do think that this was a good play on them. Um, one of the things also down here to notice is that a lot of people were expecting like Exiton or Shockmaster or things like that to come back, but you know, I'm kind of glad like with us going into Link format that we're not really going to see those cards too often in the game. So scrolling down, um, that looks like it's pretty much it for the forbidden but the last card on here is vanity's emptiness now a lot of people have been pushing for this card to get forbidden for a long time and now that it finally is forbidden i think that this is a very very good move on konami's part vanity's emptiness went from you know just a, a tech card to stop special summons to you know you being able to assemble like a massive board flip vanities during your opponent's standby phase and then they suddenly can't do anything um it became much more floodgatey than it ought to have been, and with you know cards not e as easily able to be destroyed, the drawback really didn't matter as much, especially when you're stopping like key key plays. So I'm personally I'm very very happy to see Vanities go. I think it's going to free up a lot of parts in the game, and um, yeah. So scrolling down. Not really many changes here except for one big one, which is Max C went from 2 to 1. Now, with Ghost Ash on the horizon, I personally did not see this coming. Um, you know, I had a discussion with my friend. Like, Max C is ultimately a very fair card, but it can become borderline broken, specifically in die roll formats, of which we are in one right now. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, I'm definitely kind of happy to see it go to one because like, you know, for instance, decks like DDDs and like Zodiacs and things like that, you know, your opponent, like it just basically, rather than stopping the die roll format, you know, a lot of the decks right now, um, they focus on assembling their boards because it's more important to just assemble the board. So there's really no point in taking, in not taking the maxi challenge in this format. And, you know, it's, it creates a lot of issues. Um, I'm interested to see if people will still run this card at one, specifically because, you know, you look at something like Upstart Goblin, which was a consistency card when it went to one, people weren't really running the card, but now they are, uh, they were running the card and then when it went to one, um, you know, very few people ran the card anymore, like simply out of the fact that consistency was a thing at one. So, you know, I'm interested to see. Um, Maxi definitely is one of those cards. It's very, very broken in the right formats. Um, so, yeah, very interested to see how players are going to cope with it now being limited. Now, scrolling down, this was a big surprise, but Rescue Cat is no longer forbidden. It has finally gone to one. 
Um, do note though that Rescue Cat is a once per turn effect, which means that basically, yeah, you can you can only use that effect to special summon two beast type monsters from your deck once per turn, but this could create a lot of really cool interactions with cards, and I'm so, so happy to see Rescue Cat back at one. Um, I've, you know, basically it was banned, it was banned the entire time, like, before I got back into the game. I, I got back around 2010, card was still banned, and now that it's limited, you know, this is going to be really cool for my first time being able to play it. Now, probably for one of my favorite, favorite limits on this list is Bryanac Dragon of the Ice Barrier. I am so, so excited for this card, and I think it actually got one of the best erratas out of anything recently. Um, Bryanac was errata to basically act like it was supposed to originally. It has a hard once per turn effect, and um, it's discard any number of cards to, um, to target any number of cards on the field, and um, return them to the hand, and just basically, like, you can only do that once per turn, so it removes a lot of the, like, the plays where players would, you know, utilize the more than once per turn effect, discard any number of cards, and then, um, and then, like, you know, bounce a couple of things, and then attack, and then, like, you know, bounce some more things, like, later in the turn, um, so it took, it, like, basically, it's a correction for bad card design, so I'm very happy to not only see that errata, but to also see it back. Now, scrolling down to Brain Control, a card we haven't seen off the list in a very, very long time, I think that this is a very nice limit, specifically because Brain Control, I believe, does target. It's not as broken as Snatch Steel is, since I don't think you can attack with the monster, um, but nevertheless should create a little bit more um, interactions in the game. And so I'm very excited to see how players are going to utilize brain control um, in the coming formats. My prediction, and you can take this to the bank, is that brain control is going to see a little bit of play in the beginning, but it's ultimately going to fall off the map. Though that all depends on, you know, what we're going to see with link format, because, you know, if your opponent summons a decode talker, which doesn't have, you know, any of that targeting protection and stuff. You just brain control their decode talker and you can link summon from your extra deck and, you know, do a bunch of other different plays. So ultimately, like, this is another card which we're going to see if it has a big play in the, in the game at all. My personal opinion, uh, my prediction is that it's not going to make a big splash, but, you know, you never really know. So, yeah. Now, for the next card off the list, is Future Fusion. Um, one of the things that we're noticing here, I think, is like a lot of cards that Konami had limited or forbidden beforehand are finally coming off the list. And um, Future Fusion, you know, I'm 50-50 on its errata. I run the card, well, I run the card in, um, in my Jaden Hero deck. For, you know, and I, I similarly take use of its ability to, like, dump monsters, but at the same time, you know, I understand how broken this card was. Like, you know, if you look at, like, Infernoids, for instance, being able to dump, like, massive amounts of monsters. Um, I think that the errata that they made to it was good. It was really the only way to make the card fair. Um, the errata is you activate the card, and then you can't send the monsters to your graveyard until your first standby phase after the activation. So instead of sending the monsters right away and being able to utilize them in an OTK, um, you send them during your first standby phase and then special summon the fusion monster during your second standby phase. So I think this will be good to like to deter like any crazy broken combo, specifically with, with Tierra and Infernoids. Um, yeah, like I'm interested to see what kind of what kind of plays are coming from that. And then scrolling down to Imperial Order. Now, Imperial Order is a crazy, crazy card. And I am very, very um, interested to see how players are going to use this. With the format slowing down and things becoming a little bit more floodgate -y, it'll be interesting to see how people are able to use Imperial Order to their advantage. Um, like paying life points you have to pay the life points each turn to negate the spell cards and um you know what what will this do to anti-spell to be honest and will we see more trap based decks now like 
This was a very good limit, I think, because Konami understands that, you know, traps are sort of, like, they're sort of on the way out in this game. Like, with monster effects being, you know, like, like surrogate traps, like, largely taking over the role of traps, like, being able to disrupt on your opponent's turn, you know, you have, um, you have things like this, and, um, yeah. So that's Imperial Order. Um, what I'm surprised, though, is that um, they haven't limited Harpy's Feather Duster yet, but we could be seeing that in the next couple of lists. And then also, of course, for all you hero players out there, we may have gotten Future Fusion, but we still have no Stratos. Moving on to our semi-limits, um, we have Wisdom Eye Magician coming back to two. I think this is really good. Um, the Pendulum Magician deck isn't really doing anything, and um, the the pendulum like a lot of the searchers uh pendulum call is like still at one as well and then finally zodiac rat pier going to a semi-limit this was the perfect hit of the deck um and i think it's going to take a lot of the wind out of zodiac sails they're still going to be very very potent as an engine but um you know the combo plays and the repeated like you know moves and stuff like that like that's that's all coming to an end on march 30th and i'm very happy and the last semi-limit we have is Interrupted Kaiju Slumber. Now, I'm not sure how big of an effect this is going to have. I know a lot of people usually just run the card at 2. But nevertheless, like, having the card at 3, um, you know, allows you to see it more often. And I guess in this situation, we're just basically limiting the opportunity for players to be able to, like, just do a Kaiju and then board wipe right away. And then for the final card on the list we have Sangan who as you know got that errata um not only coming off the list but going all the way back to three now this is crazy um particularly because Sangan's errata states that you cannot use the card that you search on the turn that you search it so you know like players could probably just use Sangan and then like metal foes something away and um yeah like I I don't know what to feel about this um Back when I used to play Sangan personally, I used it, um, I used to have it destroyed by my opponent and then it would search out the card and then I'd be able to use it next turn. So I think they're trying to preserve like the older style of the card without, you know, while still being able to print things like Metal Foes, which allow you to pop like a bunch of crap on your side of the field during your turn. But nevertheless, like this is, this is a very bold move, bringing Sangan from the ban list right back to three. Um, players who play tour guide, you know, maybe even like BA players or something like that might still be pretty happy about that. But, uh, you know, we're not sure if they'll play the card at all. But, uh, yeah, um, this list was a lot of, uh, very interesting hits. I think that it did a really good job bringing back a ton of cards and, you know, a lot of the hits and, um, forbids were very, very necessary. So, um... Yeah, like tell me what you guys think in the comments. I just really wanted to get this video out quickly, seeing as the ban list was just released. And um, yeah, if you like the video, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. This has been the Mermail Master with Team Time Riders YouTube channel, and we're signing out. Peace.